Smart Hall, where we are right now. What you see is um, students uh, coming in briefly after what happened um, on Sunday with the fire. They have been allowed to come back and pick up some of their belongings. Unlike the other students in the other res who are returning today, because we have to fix uh, some of the damage that was caused to the residents. And they'll be away temporarily to uh, various hotels around the city, together with uh, our sister residents, uh, Fuller Hall, across the road. What we did in the interim while they were away was just communication, of course, really assuring them about that the residents were safe. Uh, we did the best that we could to defend it. As you see, we are standing in this room. This is the only room that has been badly affected where you can see the roof fell in. There's a fridge there, there are some desks and the books. These ones are destroyed and the bedding, as you can see, this ones uh, she could not save. Every student was affected. But this one, we knew that, you know, coming into your room, that you left, you know, with everything and then you come back and it's like this, it was more traumatic. So we gave him as much support as we could. This has been the most affected area for Copano. We were very lucky if by any chance the fire had gone to, uh, to one of the curtains, then definitely we would, we would have had a fire in this blue block and, and definitely then the, the fire would have started to, to destroy the whole, the whole complex. We are going back to Rez. We've been staying here at the Fire and Ice Protea Hotel due to the Cape Town fire. It happened so unexpectedly and we were just told to just pack whatever we can and just leave. I just took whatever and I noticed like when I got here that yeah, there's some stuff that I forgot but luckily they've been donating clothes and underwears and all that so that really helped. Yesterday we received cleaners who came to our residences and cleaned all the residences from the floor up to the roof. So I think you see when it comes to that, they did uh, their homework. So I think students um, are going to be happy to go back to, to rest, but I know they're not happy because they, they were getting used to the soft life. It feels good to be back. Hotels were not really that much encouraging for you to be studying. Staying in a hotel, it's like there was no really like a formal, like a stable thing. I couldn't like focus on my studies because everything was still wild and you, you still in a new environment and you still want to adjust, but then you still can't because you're always waiting for uh, announcement, what's next, what's going to happen, so you're always alert, so you can't really focus on one thing. So now we can just relax, prepare for the following week. I know like tracking down students has been so difficult because some people left earlier and then like being in all different places and obviously no access to leadership. So people were having issues and needing to get to the hospital but then like there were no sub wardens around and no mentors around. So yeah, that was quite difficult, but I mean it is nice to be back so that we can like keep an eye on everyone and everyone's in the same place again. I am very glad to be back at dress. Everything looks fine in my room, nothing's burnt, nothing's missing and I'm very excited. We went out of our way to ensure that the students felt welcomed and we chatted to students as they arrived and um, by all accounts they had a blast. <laughs> yes it was traumatic, I'm not, I'm not underestimating the trauma of the evacuation but just chatting to the students, I think a lot of the students and people have focused on what to be thankful for. And so the UCD community, um, the staff, Cape Town as, as a whole has really opened up their hearts and their hotels <laughs> and their wallets um, for, for our students. Mm -hmm.